I am really, truly, truly, really <laughs> trying to sound coherent today. Oh my gosh, it's the first day of my vacation, and already I have actually exceeded my expectations, if you want to know the truth. Um, first of all, let me remind you to click like, share, subscribe. It's free. It is free. I, I don't know if some of you know that. It's not like subscribing to a magazine where you have to pay for it and, it, and then it comes to you comes to you free. It's just a, a formality. It gives you a reminder when my videos come out, that kind of thing, as far as the uh, the, the notification goes. But, um, you know, you don't have to, to watch it every day if you choose not to. But if it's a guilty pleasure for you because you like to watch someone else rant and ramble and, and go on and maybe talk about things that you relate to or have thought about or or just, you know, know that you're not alone or you just want to hear some background noise. Hey, I'm there for you. <laughs> anyway, it is the first day of my vacation and usually my typical MO is to get up. I don't even set an alarm. I haven't set an alarm in years, probably because I always wake up before them and that way my day does not start with alarm alarm a you know it's like gosh that's not the way to ease into your day if I have to go somewhere that now I will set it because I'm afraid I will sleep through my alarm that will be the day that I do not wake up in time but what I've been doing since I can kind of breeze in at 8 8 30 uh, that's kind of pushed me in into a different direction so there's no point in sitting at my house from 6 or 6 30 and having coffee which I don't drink but um, you know doing that you know if I can get out and take my walk that really centers me so that's just my personal preference so I will actually get out and walk well I walk five to ten miles a day that's just something that you know, I've kind of worked my way up to, and I feel like as long as I have the capability, as long as my legs and feet are working, it does center me. It's a good, relaxing thing. I get out in nature. I can have fresh air. I can listen to a podcast or sometimes TV on my on my iPhone or something on, you know, and a lot of those I can get on YouTube, but also sometimes it's just a time to clear my head or pray or just feel you know, that I'm more calm, a kinder, gentler version of myself. But that being said, try as I may, I have not been one to sleep in for years. So those days of typically college, high school, that kind of thing, or in maybe in my early days of my career, you know, it was nothing to sleep in till 10, 12 o'clock on, on a weekend. That hasn't happened in a long time, and I would not mind it. It would be great, even if I stay up late. You know, I think we just get to be creatures of habit. But today, I woke up a couple times and looked at the clock and just kept laying there. I thought it was going to rain today, and it didn't, um, or, you know, it held off. It was kind of gloomy looking outside, but the next thing I knew, it was 9 o'clock, and both myself and my husband Ron were just comatose, I guess. And we heard this sound, this foreign sound of a doorbell. No one ever rings our doorbell. I didn't even know it worked. I feel like the Beverly Hillbillies. What's that noise that plays? And magically, it always seems to coincide with someone being on the front step waiting at the door. Hmm, go figure. But I thought I heard it, but of course, you know, you think your your dreams and your reality kind of, you know, meld together. And Ron said, is that the doorbell? And I thought, and I say that disclaimer here, I thought I said, who could that be? And he said, maybe it's the police. And I thought, the police? You know, you say that so calmly, like, yeah, the police are probably coming to our door. But he said that that didn't happen. So all that did occur, the reality was him saying, is that the doorbell? And then he got up and went and see, because we were expect. Uh, I guess, it, uh, it wasn't on my to-do list, so I don't really know. But he knew, we, you know, someone was coming to do some work for us. But at any rate, nine o'clock, that was magical. But because it's my my start of a vacation, I really, I have things I want to accomplish. I have a to-do list. I have goals and plans and everything. And I did have something I was going to do today, but I didn't make it a formal agenda that I'm going to do this at this time and, you know, that kind of thing. So 
Um, I do have things on my list, but I was going to do them at my leisure. And I've got to tell you that sleeping till nine o'clock has just thrown me all off kilter. I'm so relaxed that I just, it's like I've been medicated. It's like, hey, how you doing? Even when I had to go to the store. And that's what I'm going to kind of rant and ramble about today is convenience stores. And ultimately by their very title, that's what they are. They're a convenience. They save you time and steps, sometimes money, but not always. You know, just because it's convenient, they can jack up the prices, have a different price, whatever. But here's the problem that I have. Now, if I'm on a trip or even just in day to day, there are those occasions when you go to a convenience store for snacks. You know, it's just one of those, hey, while I'm here, you know, that just is like a treat or a reward. So you might pay a little bit more just because you're already there and, hey, you got the munchies, whatever. I understand that. But there are other categories of things and people that find themselves at a convenience store. It is as varied as the day is long. So when I walk into this particular one and there's a line of like eight people and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's one clerk, but that's okay. I, I could stop and use the restroom. I could get a, ga uh, a gas. <laughs> I could, uh, well, uh, depending on what I eat. No, I wasn't getting gas. They do, they do sell gas for your car and items that produce gas, I'm sure. But I just wanted to get a, a, a soda, a drink, a pop, whatever you want to call it. And so I did that. And of course, I'm in my laid back mode. So I thought, oh, I'll just wait here. You know, I'll wait my turn. There were seven people ahead of me. And, but there were two kids and an adult. I would like to round that down and say, hey, there were only like four. But I wasn't sure because each of those children had money in their hand. So I thought, okay, you know, that's the worst it can be is seven people. The first one paid pretty quickly. The next one paid for gas. So I thought, man, this is moving like, you know, like gangbusters. This is great. But then the adult that was with those two kids got up there and he was getting lottery tickets. So every time he had to, you know, tell which one, he'd have to step out of line and walk around and, and figure out which one it was. I don't know if you have lottery in your community. And maybe it's a great thing, and maybe it benefits education. I've lived in states where they, they have lots of lottery things. Oh, gosh, I hate them. Have a special building for that, but they don't. They put it in the convenience stores because they figure, hey, and everybody and his uncle will go and pay $5, $10, $20 for a ticket, sometimes a dollar. But, you know, they will pay all this money. Let me give my disclaimer. I am not into voodoo. I am not a witch and I do not practice spells or anything like that. But if someone is ahead of me in line and they are buying lottery tickets, I'm sorry, you are not going to win because any power that I have within my brain will combust and say, you're going to lose, you're going to lose, you're going to lose, just because you get ahead of me. And I am not a fan of people that have to stand there and go and go and go. And I've yet to see anybody win large amounts of money when they're standing ahead of me and holding up me in my line when I'm only going to pay 84 cents and chances are I've got the correct change. Just say it. But anyway, so he had to get, I don't know how many, I kind of zoned out at one point because it was like, oh my gosh, you know, he had to go. And of course the lottery tickets he wanted were not at the register. There's only one person that's there and, and whatever. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he was having a heap of fun, but for the 28 of us that were still standing in line, I might be rounding up a bit for the rest of us that were there. We were not happy. Well, then there's a couple people ahead of me, a lady an older lady that had a six pack of beer and I'm sure she was ready to tear into that by the time this was over. So I'm thinking, okay, she's got that purchase. And then another lady had like nachos and cheese and hot dogs and, you know, all, and she was very large, you know, and I want to say, oh, you probably don't need that, but it's not my, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, um, I would expect that as well. If, if I was standing there and I was a large person and I was buying a large quantity of food, I would expect people to judge me, but <laughs> that's just what we do. And the uh, other person that was in line, oh, she was ahead of me, young girl. And it didn't appear that she had anything in her hands. So see, all of this was a gambler's crapshoot, if you will, because the lady with the food 
That might have been all she had, but she might have wanted cigarettes and lottery tickets. I mean, once you get up there, just because that's what you see is visible does not mean that's all they're going to get. And the same with the person ahead of me. I thought, oh, this, you know, this could go horribly wrong. I could be standing here for 45 minutes. And I didn't want to judge the person ahead of me, but I couldn't help but think, what's she going to do? Well, you know, it's a wild card. Well, as it turns out, the lady with the beer, she did get lottery tickets. So that took care of, you know, her amount of time. And then the person with the food just paid for food. Yay. And she was gone. What well, left one more person, which was the young girl in front of me, which I did not want to judge, but I couldn't help but be suspicious. And she got up there and said, you know, whatever, 10 on 10, $10 on pump number 10. And I felt so bad because I thought, you poor thing, honey, you should have been able to go ahead of the line because now you've had to wait here and then you have to go out there and pump gas too. But, you know, there's no special line, just like there's no special lanes to drive in for new drivers or people like me who are in more of a hurry than some of the the um, other drivers. <laughs> anyway, um, so she got that and then she was out of the way. And then, of course, boom, I'm a pretty quick transaction, which I must say, I'm going to brag on myself, I am usually a very quick shopper. I know what I want. I try to get things with price tags on them. I try to have my money ready, which I don't know if I said this in a previous post, but there was someone ahead of me one day, and there were only like three people in line. He had not, he had already been waiting in line. So I'm figuring, you know, you're in line, you know you're going to be spending money because you have things in your hand and you are moving toward the register. And yet, when it was his turn, and he's directly, he's the only thing between me and my purchase. And he got up there, put everything on the register, and when the clerk told him how much his purchase was, then, only then, did he put his hand and reach into his back pocket to retrieve his wallet. What happened? Did the cash register sneak up on you, buddy? Come on, did you have no idea this is where you were going to end up? Have your money ready. Do it. Do it now. I don't know. I will tell you, I am asking nothing of people that I am not willing to do. So I try to, I don't know, have my money ready so that when it's my turn, I can complete my transaction and go. I, I just figure it's kind of like sitting at a light. You know, if I get a chance to turn, I kind of want to go. And I'm thinking the same holds true when you are shopping and making a purchase. And the fact that it's a convenience store, don't make it inconvenient for the rest of the people. You know, I, I mean, maybe you're in no hurry. Maybe you got all day and this is the only thing that you plan to do is walk down to the convenience store or drive down there and have one stop shopping. Maybe your whole life revolves around this store. Okay, but for the rest of us who just want to kind of, I don't know, get on with our day and not spend, you know, 20 minutes that we'll never see again going in there and observing people. Well, you can certainly do that. And it doesn't cost you anything, that's for sure. But um, that is my take on all the ins and outs of people that find their way into a varied and much diverse line of people at the convenience store. So if you do enjoy watching other human beings and kind of, you know, getting a take on how people behave, that's probably a good place to go. Anyway, it's my vacation. I am going to enjoy it. I am not going to judge harshly because that may be me by the end of the week. I may be sitting there saying, you know what? I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket too. Probably not happening. And I'll tell you why. Because my one trip to Atlantic City, and it was very cool because it was like all the things you see in the Monopoly game, you know, all the different roads and, and park place and boardwalk and all of that kind of stuff. That's where they got it. But I went to a few little places and I, I probably played a nickel, quarter, dollar slot and I was up. And when I was up, it was fab. Look at me. I'm making money. But then I just as quickly lost money. And it was all I could do to break even on probably the $3 that I had with me that I was going to, you know, check it out. So I'm not a good gambler, which is why I don't do lottery, because all it does is it's like you're just taking my money. It's like a parking ticket. 
You know, I get nothing out of it. I'm just giving my money away. I might as well roll down my window when I'm driving down the highway and throw everything that I have in my wallet right out the right out the window and let it just blow into the wind because I'm getting nothing out of it. So, and it might be, I just thought of this, maybe, maybe I have in my rare, rare, I can't even remember how long ago, it's, I don't even think I've ever paid for a lottery ticket. Maybe because I'm thinking people behind me are willing me to lose. So, you know, thank you. Whoever that was, thank you. You did me a huge favor because I want something for my money. Whether it's a store or groceries or convenience or just a, you know, just a soft drink. I want to know that when I've paid my money, I am getting something for it. So, food for thought. Just um, spend wisely. Hope you get everything that you deserve. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.